We were excited awesome, about this. Right? That's awesome. And so, like, for sure. I, I still like, hear that you guys were checking I think, the interview. Yeah, man. Dude, like, like, you got a, you got some real impressive be, impressive interviews, yeah, man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, really like, cool. So, thank you, you very much, much man. Shit was out. Oh, Absolutely, right. man. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm Damon Campbell with MusicSmyLife.com here at the Crowfoot in Pontiac, Michigan yeah! with a very special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Pat Brown. <laughs> well, <laughs> short and sweet. Short uh, and sweet, baby. Well, it's great to meet you, man. Good um, to meet you, too. Thanks for coming and doing these, Oh, man. no, this thanks for awesome. having us, man. Like I said, we've been watching your interviews the last couple nights, and we're really stoked. That's awesome. Man. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so here you are touring with Mod Sun. Yep. Before that, you were rocking out with Sing It Loud. Yep. Uh, and even before that, with the semester, who I know Mod Sun was, that. Yeah, was actually research. drumming yeah, for yeah. at the time. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Um, but really, it all goes back to March 21st of 02, right? At the Roy Wilkins Auditorium? Yes, the Roy Wilkins Auditorium. Well, and what happened that day? Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Okay, that night, um, my dad took me to my very first show ever. And it was Hot Water Music, uh, Less Than Jake, and Bad Religion. And um, I'd never been to a concert before, and that one especially was like on like a grand scale. It's like a right. half arena, yeah. huge production, and like Less Than Jake was my favorite band, and it changed my life forever. Like my life was going one way at that point, and like when I saw that show, uh -huh. my life immediately whew, went that way. Right. Yeah. And, and interestingly enough, uh, somewhere down the line, you actually became buddies with the Less Than Jake saxophone player, right? JR. I did. Yeah, he's actually uh, one of my best friends. Actually, I wish. Um, I have my wallet on me because I have like I have like his VFW card oh, really? and I keep it in my wallet like at all times. Yeah, he's like one of my best friends. Um, and I got to meet him on Warp Tour in 2009, and it's like it was like one of the things in my life like where like you start here and, and it comes full circle. Yeah. That was like one of the first things that happened um, like that to me. Right. And it was really cool. So I don't know. He's like one of my idols, one of my good friends, and I always get real stoked like when I talk to him and yeah. think about him, you know. And he's an awesome guy. I was yeah. I was gonna say it's crazy how things work out like that absolutely um, uh, another example being uh another buddy of yours clay is actually somewhat to thank for you and mod yes. son coming together right absolutely oh my gosh yeah so my buddy clay um actually how i met mod son um we got arrested together um, right. and uh basically what happened was my buddy clay was like i have some friends from the town over they want to hang out so i skipped uh or i snuck out of my house to go hang out with them i had summer school the next day we went and posted like a bunch of pictures Pictures on people's houses, like dirty pictures from like a website, right? From like topgirl.com. Like well, I'm not gonna say it. I don't want people to look it up. That's yeah, gnarly. I actually went to it. It's pretty gross. Okay, yeah. So we got caught. Um, we got arrested, and when we were sitting in the holding cell, we were like, "Yo, let's start a band," and uh, that's how we met because right. of my friend Clay. Well, shout out so, to Clay. Shout out to Clay. When I when I think of Clay, I think of like dirt and mud. And wasn't there another time when you guys got uh, when you were on tour and you got stuck in not just any mud, but like in someone's front yard? Yes. In Rushville, Indiana. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. So uh, sing it loud. We did uh, these this Christmas tour with uh, All Time Low, yeah. the band All Time Low, and uh, we were picking up our drummer who lives in Rushville, Indiana, which is like Hicksville. It's oh, like okay. in the middle of Indiana. Right. Like there's nothing there, and uh, it was like r rainy and muddy, and our tour manager charlie fox he uh, at the time he did like a u-turn in someone's yard like you know like in the, in the country to, to yeah. turn around and he got stuck in their yard and they came out with like baseball bats and like we had oh, to really? call the police and it was, dude it was gnarly like i thought it, and i was wearing like a neon yellow like sweatsuit uh -huh. and i was like oh my god like they're gonna get me first dude <laughs> like i'm going first man. yeah exactly you know so i like ran to like the back of the van and like hit i was like oh Oh my God. Cops came. Um, three three cop cars came. They had to like break up the whole thing. It was crazy. That's all, oh man. Yeah. But that but that one wasn't a wasn't even a prank, right? Well, that one was just like a genuine accident. That was a genuine accident. All right. Yep. But there was a prank back in the day that you used to like to pull on uh, the Sing It Loud producer Jordan, right? Yes. Oh well, my gosh. <laughs> what okay. Was that? So my buddy Jordan Schmidt actually um, I just finished a new EP oh, okay. and he mixed the whole thing. Like really? Jordan and me go way back like So no no hard feelings over no, the Oh no no not at all. Like it it I would not be here hanging out with you today. Yeah. Like, there's a couple people in my life. Like, Mod's one of them. Clay's one of them. Yeah. You know, like, there's a lot of different people that, like, I, my life would be totally different. Jordan's one of those people. Okay. He, like, kind of, like, helped start Sing It Loud with us. Like, recorded our first recordings. Yeah. Like, believed in us when no one else did. And so I like to keep it, like, in the family. Like, I love, like, sending my stuff to him to get mixed. But we totally. were doing a record with him. And um, what I would do was, like... 
I, I like wouldn't want to walk all the way down the hallway to go to the bathroom, so I'd like pee in bottles, and I'd just like leave the bottles like all over Jordan Schmidt's <laughs> studio. <laughs> That's horrible. And like he like at one point there was like literally fifteen, and they were like so well hidden. Yeah. And like once every two days, he'd be like, Pat, God damn it, what the fuck? I told you to not do that. Man. Right, right, So like right. I'd do that to him all the time. I still do it to this day when I see him. Oh really? Yeah, I'll be like, Hey Jordan, look behind that desk right there, and he'd be like, Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm sure, you know, you're only human. I'm sure there's some things that ruffle your feathers from time to time, too. Like, uh, didn't you actually used to have a girlfriend back in the day who wore jeans without butt pockets? Uh, yeah, yes, I did. Um, and uh, we had a Sing It Loud shirt after that, and it was called, uh, it, it was like a cartoon girl with no pockets, and it said, Sing It Loud, get some pockets. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I, and I just, like, never got, like, do you remember when that was, like, a big thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, like, I, I feel like I was, like, always kind of, like, ahead of the curve. Like when Doc Martens were out, I was like, dude, screw Doc Martens, man. Right, like, those right, are right. so lame. But and then remember, like three years later, everyone was like, screw Doc Martens. Yeah. Well, that's how I always felt about butt pockets yeah. on jeans, buttless pockets on right. jeans, you know. And uh, I did have a girlfriend um, who wore them, and it drove me insane. Yeah, I just I think it just kind of looks weird. Grinds my gears, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, grinds yeah. my gears, man. This um, is like the best interview. I've ever. Oh, thank I'm you, so man. excited. I'm glad man. you're it's enjoying like, it. Yeah, yeah. I can't um, believe that, man. That's so crazy. Yeah, I guess I was more of you know a pet peeve, but wasn't there also so, growing up, a uh, grumpy old man who kind of grinded your gears to the point of revenge, even? There was a couple of them. Uh, Did spe you specifically the specific one who got pissed off about you guys always skateboarding? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, there was, like, this guy... Um, and he'd always yell at us for skateboarding. So, oh my gosh, I hope he's not, like, watching this ever. But, yeah, like, we'd go into, like, his pool and, like, pee in his pool. Like, oh, really? You know, we'd, like, do funny... So like, maybe that's where the water bottle prank started. Yeah, yeah, like, like he'd yell at us for skateboarding, call the police on us. So, like, in the middle of the night, we'd, like, go, like, throw stuff in his pool. You yeah. know, like, one of my friends, like, took a shit in his pool. Oh, really? Like, you know, like, we'd pee in his pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we'd, like, just, like, just mess with this poor right. dude. But, you know, I mean, it's like, we were just skateboarding, man. Yeah. We, we were 14 years and old. You were just at our, at we all do silly house, things At our parents' up. house, you know, and, like, kind of, like, you know, like, I, I've i always kind of, like, hung with, like, the right group of people. Like, yeah. I've always, like, take pride. I feel like you are who you surround yourself with. Yep. And I've always tried to surround myself with, like, uplifting people, good people that do good things. You know what totally. I'm saying? And me and my skateboarding friends, it's like, well, everyone else was, like, going out and partying and, like, getting drunk and stuff when we were in high school, which is something I never did until I was out of high school. Yeah. You know, like, we would be out skateboarding or, like, playing guitar, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, doing stuff like that. So that's why, like, it would really make me mad. I feel like they just had the stereotype. Yeah, totally. Like, oh, they're skateboarding, you know, bad kids. But we were, like, good kids. We just, like, skateboard. Right, exactly. You know, which has, like, it's, like, you know, social stamp on yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? And, and like I said, we all do silly things growing up. Uh, yeah. And, and you actually mentioned alcohol, which uh, is, of course, often associated with, I guess, regrettable decisions. Yes. Um, but uh, speaking of alcohol, wasn't there a time when, like, a 13-year-old fan somehow, like, gave you a bottle of booze as a gift? There's probably, like, a lot of... This sounds terrible, but, like, there, like, there have been people that, like... I don't know how they get it, but they're yeah. like, oh, I know you like this kind of beer, and they'll, like, give me it. <laughs> and I'll be like, did you get your par parents yeah, to yeah, get that yeah. for me? Like, right. can I even accept this? Because I know it's illegal to give alcohol to minors. Yeah, yeah, yeah But is totally. it illegal for minors to give alcohol to of age That's people? a good question. I never thought of that. I've actually just thought of that for the first time. Yeah, yeah, no, this yeah. is the first time hearing of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Um, but, yes, that sounds terrible. But I didn't instigate it. Right. I never instigated it. It just happens. Yeah. Sometimes. Not really anymore. It used to, like when I was like 21. And I'm I sure was, they meant well, you know. Yeah. You know what they I mean? They did, absolutely. Yeah. And um, I appreciate appreciated it. And, and uh, isn't there like a, a drinking game back home that you like to play that involves your dog, Sydney? Yeah. Um, so we have like uh, my dog, Sydney. She's now. How old is she? She's getting old. She's like 12 years old, 11 years old. Oh, really? Kind of reaching the end of a rope, unfortunately. Yeah. But she's like my homegirl. Yeah, like, yeah. I love her. And um, she's like super horny all the time. And she oh. like always humps people. <laughs> yeah. So like what we would do, like when my mom would go out of town, me and my brother would throw like huge parties at her uh -huh. house. Like when me and my brother still lived at, at my mom's house. And we would like surround my dog and we'd like chant her name and like whoever <laughs> she would jump on uh -huh. first we would we would like have to take a shot oh that's hilarious or like pound a beer like shotgun a beer right yeah i heard your your grandma's quite the party here too right so much oh, so yeah. that she actually got the na nickname party barty party barty yeah that's my grandma <laughs> it's it's funny i got two grandmas and they're like the sweetest women ever yeah i've never heard them swear i've never heard them raise their voices they're always so nice everyone has great things to say about uh -huh. them and like all my friends love my grandmas you know but my grandma on my mom's side 
she's like not really a partier. My grandma on my dad's side is. Okay. And she coined her own nickname, Party Barty. Her name really? is Barty. Come yeah. to find out, she's got this whole other side. Yeah, this whole um, other side. And it's really cool because like the thing about my grandmas that I think is really cool is that they're super young and like, or no, not super young. They're super old, super but they're old. super young at heart. Oh, okay. You know, like my grandma, Nancy, she goes out, hangs out with like all her friends. Like my grandma, Barty, goes out and like she came, she came out to our concert in, <laughs> in St. Paul and she was like, Drinking beer, drinking wine. Oh, really? Like, she could, like, probably, like, drink me under the table. My grand, my own grandmother. You know That's what I'm saying? Crazy, yeah. Like, it just, like, runs in the family. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and keeping it in the family a second. Isn't, like, your mom's side full of musicians? Yes. Yeah, my mom um, started me on piano when I was three years old. She oh, wow. was a musician. Uh, my uncle was in, qu- in choirs his whole life. Uh, my grandpa... Um, it has been a piano player since he was like a little kid. Yeah. Um, my little sister has a has a scholarship to Iowa State for playing oboe oh, wow, okay. in the orchestra, and she plays violin and piano. My other sister plays violin and piano. My little brother plays cello, uh, piano, guitar, bass, and drums. Is that is that Matt? Matt, yeah. yeah. And yeah, wasn't yeah. he in a band called Skies Alive? Yes, he was. What's what's he up to these days? Is um, he still he, doing it? He's in he's in like this like punk rock band actually me and me and mod like helped him record their their first dp oh, they, really? they just released it that's awesome yeah they're really dope nice so we well, gotta get them on some shows yeah. for sure well uh you, you know I'm, I'm sure family is you know probably comes first for you yes. obviously but aside, aside from that uh at this point in your career do you consider music your life absolutely 100 percent. it's i i have i was a lifeguard until i was 18 um and uh I went on like a tour and did merch for a band called Patent Pending. Oh, really? And they opened for Cobra Starship at Gym Class Heroes. It was like four years ago. Huh. And after I went on that tour, I, I came home and like quit my job and I like never worked really? again. Yeah, just I, decided I just it was all wanted music. to tour, wanted to do music, just That's like awesome, made man. ends meet. And through that, I just kind of went from like situation to situation yeah. and ended up here in like my favorite situation yet for sure. Exactly. So well, yeah, I definitely can say it's like really all I've ever known. It's all I've cared about. You know, it's like I didn't care about getting good grades in school. Yeah. Like I had jobs in high school, but like I didn't care about working or making money because right. I didn't want to. Like all I wanted to do was like focus on practice with my bands. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'd see bands play. You know, like in O2. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd see bands play, and I'd be like, that's what I want to do every single day. Dude, this is amazing. I can't believe that. Appreciate it, man. Dude, so funny. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously I'm not psychic. Like, it's all out there. You yeah. knew the date of the first concert I ever went to in my life. <laughs> and see some stuff like that takes, like, But, like, what? So, like, you like, maybe, like, some, like, random kid's blog says it? Because he mentioned Fatty. Like, he mentioned Fatty. Yeah. No way. Did he mention him as Fatty? Yeah. And I can't even think of a time that I mentioned Fatty. Thanks for your time, man. Uh, no problem, man. Thank you. That was my favorite ride. interview I've ever done. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. I swear to God, like I've never had anyone interview me that's researched that much. That's, that's awesome. so cool. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. You know? Thank you, man. Um, Thank you. No doubt, man. Appreciate it, man. Uh, anything else you want to say to the people out there watching? Uh, yeah, I've got uh, my first solo EP coming out on my birthday on January 5th. It's going to be out on iTunes. It's called In My Room, so you can check that out. Follow me on Twitter at, at the Pat Brown or on Facebook at Pat Brown Music. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. No doubt. There you have it. Once again, I'm Damon Campbell, and this is Pat Brown. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Damn, that was fucking awesome. That was so tight. Yeah.